Hello and welcome to part 3 of the WSRR policy demonstration. In this demonstration we're going to be looking at policy promotion and we're going to be assuming that you've already followed the first two parts which would have involved you creating a policy and attaching it to your SLD. Okay, so we start off by logging into the business space UI of our governance master. Now, so for, for those who don't know, I'll give you a quick brief overview of what promotion is. Promotion involves having several WSRR servers, uh, one which is known as the governance master, and then one inside each of your environments, such as uh, staging, pre-production, and production. Uh, for this demonstration, <coughs> we're going to have just one environment, and that's going to be production. All the configuration for promotion has already taken place. I'm not going to cover that in this demo. Um, you need to refer to the info center for that. However, I'm going to show you how you use it in the context of the governance enablement profile or GEP. So you should notice on the left hand side in the watch list that we have our mediation policy here and it is in the identified states. I covered in the previous demo that you shouldn't really be attaching um, policies to documents unless they're already approved. However, we didn't want to go into how you did that approval because it was out of context of that demo. So we're going to approve it now. Uh, under actions you can propose it and then following the proposition it's possible for you to approve it. Of course in reality you know you wouldn't be doing it yourself in those double steps you'd be getting sent to some committee to make sure that they agreed that it fulfilled their requirements but that's not for us to really cover in this. So now our policy is approved but that's no good because it's not actually been sent down the wire to the production WSRR yet and so we need to explain how it is that we do that. I'll switch now to a little diagram. Now this diagram explains all the objects for one service's consumption of another service. So in this case it's the eligibility service and it's consumed by the account creation service. This is the example that you'll see in the GEP tutorial which I referred to previously. Um, so when you do a promotion, let's say for example we were to promote the eligibility service 1.0 here that I'm circling with the mouse, what would happen is the promotion mechanism would follow the arrows down and it would promote those three objects there that I'm drawing this, the mouse around. And conversely if you were to promote the account creation service 1.0 over here on the left it would follow down and promote those three but also follow the SLA and promote these three here as well. Now given that we want to actually have everything um, from the bottom three rows if, if you imagine that what you're looking at is a table here that involves us promoting the eligibility service and then the account creation service and that's exactly what we're going to do. Now it's a little bit unrealistic here but what we've got in this scenario is everything's already in the production state in its governance state um, however promotion wasn't enabled at the time that that took place and as a consequence of that none of the items are already in the production WSRR. Okay so we're going to return now to our business space UI and we're going to find that SLD. So on the overview page, I'm going to click, sorry did I say SLD, I meant to say service version. So I'm going to um, choose the SLD here and then follow up in its navigator to find the service version that we want. And you'll notice it's in the operational state which is essentially means it's in production. However we can redefine that and that takes it a step backwards in the life cycle and makes it no longer in production. Certified is what it calls it. So then we can once more propose it and then approve that production deployment. And what that will do now, you'll notice it took a little bit longer. And that's because it, it patched up, it batched up all those files and sent them down the wire onto the other server. So I shall uh, switch now to this tab. Notice it will run 9449. That's one port higher. In this case, I've got both my registers on the same host name. Not necessarily a realistic example, but. So we log in once more on the operations and you'll see there's my mediation policy, there's the SLD. So if we find the service version here, switch to the graph view. We'll hopefully see all the objects that we expect to see having been pulled down. So there's the SLD and the service and that's the endpoint. So everything's there that we expect from the service 
version point of view availability of service. So we'll repeat that step now. So we come back to the governance master and we'll do the same again. But this time, for the pop to the diagram, we're going to do it for this one here, the account creation service version. So here is the account creation service version. You'll notice that the icon matches that in the diagram as well, just to make everything nice and consistent. And it's in operational state, so we'll switch it back through, through the redefine transition to make it certified. And then we'll propose and approve that production deployment. And again, that transition should take a little bit longer. There we go, that's complete now. So if I move once more over here, switch to the overview, we should notice a couple more objects. And indeed, there we go. The SLA has come over the wire, and also the SLD for the account creation service and the service version. Let me just show to you there. And there's the service version. So we now know that we've successfully re-promoted both of those um, service versions and their objects. So if I return now to this diagram, the SLA in the middle here represents a binding agreement between the consumer and the provider, essentially giving the consumer permission to consume the provided service. One of the new pieces of functionality in WSRR 8 is that of the anonymous SLA. And what that is, is it's a kind of like a default fall through that if you've got no matching SLAs, then it will re refer to the anonymous SLA to determine what should happen to any messages. And because what we have in our registry comes from the get tutorial and it doesn't include an anonymous SLA, it's up to us now to create one. So I'm returning now to the governance master business space and to the overview page. And the anonymous SLA, I'll just switch, switch back to the diagram actually, the anonymous SLA comes off the SLD here of the service provider. So that's where we need to go in order to, to create it. So here's the SLD of the eligibility service. We click on the pencil to edit. And down the bottom we should find one of our relationships is called anonymous SLA. So we'll add an SLA. And we'll click on create because we're creating a brand new one. Giving it a sensible name. And at this point we have to add an SLD. And that SLD is the account eligibility SLD. If essentially it links back to itself. And we can even add our policy in if we wanted to. We could put our mediation policy in. I'm not going to do that now, but any policies there would be the policies that would be used by the incoming messages that didn't have their own SLA. So you might, for example, put a reject all policy on there to just simply say, sorry, you haven't got a policy, you're not coming in. So we click finish on that, which was the anonymous SLA, we click finish here on the SLD to uh, persist the change, and you'll see down here now that we have the anonymous SLA. It shows up twice, that's, that's because of the fact that the SLD actually links in and then links back out again to the anonymous SLA. But what we've got now is we've got a change here on the governance master that's not on the production WSRR. And so if I switch back to the diagram, it's, it's this object here, because essentially to the right hand side here you'd see the uh, anonymous SLA and so in order to re-promote that or to, to re-promote these objects causing the promotion of the anonymous SLA it's this eligibility service here which must go through the correct life cycle. So back on the governance master we can navigate up to the service version and then once more redefine, propose and approve And again, you wouldn't necessarily be taking all these steps yourself in one fell swoop. It's far more likely that the production deployment would need to be approved by the SOA. So now over here, if I go to the SLD of the eligibility service, this with the green banner, not the blue banner, being the production, we see the anonymous SLA. And all the objects that we just promoted were all in their um, active, subscribable, or approved states already. If at the point when you promoted the eligibility service version here, 
the SLD had temporarily been taken out of the subscribable state, then when you promoted it, the SLD would not have been promoted. Sorry, that's that's incorrect. I'll rephrase that. If at the moment you promoted the uh, eligibility service, the SLD wasn't insubscribable, it would be promoted, but its lack of being in a subscribable state would be promoted. And that could cause something like data power to no longer pick it up because data power is one of our ESBs, only picks up things that are in the subscribable state. Policies, however, only get promoted when they are approved. So if it was in the unapproved state and you ran promotion, it wouldn't get promoted. That's where my, my, my mistake lied. So the policy on the eligibility service here would have to be in the approved state in order to be promoted. Now one of the important things to bear in mind here is the notion of re-promotion and re-promotion when it's necessary to uh, promote a deletion. Deletion itself is never normally promote, uh, pr yeah, promoted. So if I was to delete the SLD here and then re-promote the eligibility service service version, the SLD would remain on the runtime. However, in the case of a policy, you wouldn't want that behavior to take place because, for example, you might have a policy here which says to uh, reject everything and then when you delete that policy, you would expect it no longer to be active. So if we followed the same behavior there, then your policies would, in effect, never be able to be detached. And, of course, we want, our, we want to be able to detach policies. So policies are a special case and it's the one instance where deletion is honored on repromotion. And so we're now going to just explain how you do that. So here we go, green banner, this is the production system. And for the SLD of the eligibility service, you'll notice that there is my mediation policy here in the middle and it's approved. So what we're going to do is we're going to detach that policy and promote it. So back on the governance master, we need to get ourselves onto the SLD of the eligibility service, which is here. We already know how to do detachment from lesson one. Here is our policy, and then we click the cross and press finish. So now in the governance master, we no longer have that policy, but it hasn't yet been promoted, so it's not been affected on the production system. So we must navigate back up the tree to the eligibility service service version and put that through the little cycle to redefine propose and finally approve the production deployment. Okay, that's been successful. Come back over here now. We don't get a refresh option here, do we? Yeah, we do that. And now you'll notice there are no policies anymore on this SLD. So you successfully detached the policy and promoted that change across. Hopefully you understood that. I do appreciate that it is a slightly complicated um, procedure. Just to reiterate the basics, it's always the service version which you uh, promote and re-promote. And once you've promoted, you re-promote by going redefine, propose, and approve. And it's always the approve for production which triggers the promotion. Or similarly, further back up the life cycle, it might be the approve for staging or pre-production, but in this instance we only considered our, uh, concerned ourselves with promotion. And that concludes demonstration number three. Thank you very much.